Hi there, everybody. What's up? What's up? Um, today we are going to do a pickups video <laughs> for September 2021. This is officially 13 months I've been doing this thing. I think I have a grasp of what's good and how to do this. At least I hope so. Sometimes I forget my audio because I'm an idiot, but whatever. Um, September wise, pretty good month, slow month. Actually, no, it's not. There's a lot of video game releases that came out in September. September, October have a lot of good releases. Um, two of mine that I've been playing a lot of lately are Lost Judgment, which is a sequel to Judgment, uh, made by RGG Studios and Yakuza uh, fame. Um, the second one is the Halo Infinite Flight. Uh, so last weekend and this next upcoming weekend, uh, they let us have uh, free reign inside of their uh, 4v4 uh, multiplayer. Uh, with only about four or five maps. I think it's four maps total. And so it was it's been a blast messing around in the sandbox. It's oh my god, it's so good. Like like Halo hasn't felt that good in terms of like their sandbox and the mechanics in a long time. So it's been it's been really nice to see everyone's feedback and criticisms of the game and the build so far. And yeah, the 343 is listening to what we're complaining about and on anything that they could like improve uh, in the next coming months. I believe as of today, it's 69 days until the actual uh, release of Halo Infinite. Um, nice. So <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of time uh, for them to take our constructive feedback and hopefully apply it to the game um, to make it the best it possibly can be on launch. Um, it is lacking a few features that we know about, like Forge and uh, co-op uh, play. So, and that that's like a total bummer. Uh, I think co-op more so than Forge because there's enough content to last us, hopefully until Forge gets around. But co-op is a very huge Halo experience uh, to a lot of people. Um, it's, it's how I got into Halo actually, is just by word of mouth and like people saying like, hey, you should come over and try playing this. And it ends up becoming like one of the favorite games of a lot of people. Um, and so, yeah, that's a huge bummer. But I hope what they have for in store for campaign and everything is enough to justify um, those features not being there on launch. That being said, we haven't seen anything about the campaign yet, which is kind of crazy. Uh, normally, a lead up to a Halo game, there's like a huge media blitz and all this other stuff. Like, there's no Legendary Edition on sale that we know of, um, which is concerning to me. I was able, I was like, knock on wood, I was lucky enough to get the special edition Halo Infinite Xbox Series X console and the Master Chief controller, the Series 2 controller, uh, both. I was sweating bullets to get the console, <laughs> um, so, but but I, I, oh my god, thank god I was able to get one. Uh, but now uh, I have to sell my current Xbox Series X uh, that I have here, um, but I already found a buyer, so I think I'm okay on that. Anyway, back to the Halo news. Other than that, it's looking good, because every time they announce something that's very disappointing for the community, <laughs> they let us play the game and then we just forget about all the bad stuff, because the gameplay in Halo Infinite is so good right now. Um, yeah, there needs to be adjustments. Um, I saw a lot of flag carry trickery with the grapple hook. That needs to definitely be toned down. Uh, the BXB combos and the BYB combos um, are... The, the glitch is back from Halo 2. Uh, but those definitely need to be toned down because there's <laughs> there's like no penalty to to pull off those combos like whatsoever. There should be a penalty if you can't do it on the right timing. Um, so that needs to be addressed. The AR is actually very good right now. It's the best it's ever been um, in the entire series, in my opinion. Um, but that needs to be addressed because the headshot multiplier multiplier is really high. It shouldn't have the range or the headshot range that it does right now. So they need to fix that. Um, but other than that, the BR is good. The sniper and the plasma pistol need some work on it. Um, the sniper rifle on PC aims really weird. Um, it, it, it's not bullet on time. Like wherever you're scoped in, whatever um, zoomed level that you're at, isn't exactly where the bullet will go. There's a little bit of randomization, which shouldn't be the case for a sniper rifle. Um, so they need to fix that. So the aiming is like really hard uh, for a sniper rifle um, in Halo Infinite. Uh, for the plasma pistol, it definitely needs more utilization because it got stripped of that <laughs> once they have all the electric weapons like the shock rifle and everything that do EMP damage. The plasma pistol can't do that anymore. So 
it's worthless to pick up on the field and there's like no reason to have it on the battlefield right so like they need to like up its value or utilization in order for people to, to entice uh, players to pick it up because <laughs> it can't just be nothing plasma pistol has been one of the most like useful weapons to strip down a shield take down enemy like banshees or emp vehicles that kind of thing it's been amazing to use in this version of it it's probably the worst it's ever been um so yeah they need to fix those other than that the sandbox has been pretty well <laughs> i think they should adjust a little bit of the bloom in like the commando um or and the sidekick uh although i kind of like it i don't know it, it's it's that's more of like a skill based thing like you have to know how to use these weapons and that's the whole point of halo um and it's and and i think with, as time goes on, more people get used to it. Like people have gotten used to how the sniper works because I've seen crazy clips on on like normal on like the normal maps, uh, as some crazy clips on on using that thing, getting a bunch of headshots. So people got eventually got used to it. They just like were so um, what do you call it? Their their gaming habits have been so ingrained in like the MCC, the Halo MCC, and like Halo Five that uh, they kind of complained about that, um, which they shouldn't really. Uh, other than that, um, oh yeah, so there's a difference in parity of the aiming between Halo Infinite on PC and the console because halfway through that last weekend's flight, I, I was most, I first start on PC, aiming sucks both on controller and on like keyboard and mouse. Actually in keyboard and mouse it's a lot easier, the problem is that I don't have access to all the moves. Uh, the movement abilities uh, like you were able to do on the controller and so um, when I switched over to the Xbox Series X it felt way better like leagues better uh, the aiming mechanics and whatever it, it, it felt exactly right for a controller I didn't use keyboard or mouse on my Xbox Series X but I assume it's the same kind of deal um, but that felt it, it was way more tuned towards controller on the Xbox Series X version. However, I just downloaded a patch or something for the PC, which uh, addresses a lot of that issue uh, with controllers uh, for the PC version. So I'll try it out tonight. Hopefully they fixed it a little bit uh, because I would primarily like to play Halo Infinite on my PC. Um, my Xbox Series X is for like the living room and the and like the single player campaign like grandeur because I have my like sound system hooked up to that with the sub and everything and like that's how I like to play my single player games on my PC it's more of like grind kind of deal um competitive mindset when I'm at my PC because I'm only like you know a foot away from the screen I have my headphones I'm locked in and like that's that's where I do my business uh competitively wise there so anyway that's a whole other thing all right so I gave away a code to that um just now uh, congratulations fucking scuba it's your code and we're already friends because i know you from beforehand i can't believe you won that but congratulations it was definitely random i made a video about it and everything uh so yeah congratulations on that so anyway all right we're gonna go straight into the pickups there's some stuff i forgot from last month that i'm gonna show on the table first pickups from last month that i completely forgot to talk about um i know i got magazines people don't like magazines anymore uh, print is a dead kind of medium to a lot of people, especially in the video game space. They don't get their news fast enough from print media, so they go to websites and whatnot. But I started learning everything I needed to know about video games through print magazines. Um, internet wasn't available at the time when we started playing games, guys, in the, the NES generation. So, um, print was very important to me, um, because it was nice having like a physical like a physical medium to touch all the time, to, to look at these huge pictures and like high-res images of like what you're gonna be playing. Uh, and that was the only way we were able to do that. Um, EGM is my favorite publication of all time. I, I think I've mentioned that several times. Uh, but the ones that have, have been outlasting them are pretty good these days. Um, there are certain ones I would go out there and pick up uh, because they have like special covers of uh, games available. Um, but I actually went to a bookstore because <laughs> there's, there's a bookstore that's finally around us um, and picked up a couple of magazines. Uh, the first one I held up earlier is Edge Magazine with Solar Ash on the cover. This is going to be a PlayStation 5, I believe exclusive, timed exclusive. I, I, I don't remember, but uh, Edge Magazine is a UK based uh, games magazine. Um, they have gorgeous covers uh, are, and artwork uh, that they normally present inside of their uh, inside of their publication, it's really nice. Uh, 
their editorial team is really good too, so um, shout out to them. Like, I love their covers. Like, it's. Yeah, it's front and back. It's beautiful. Um, Solar Ash is like a game I'm looking forward to uh, for the PlayStation 5. That should be pretty nice. Uh, <laughs> this one, uh, they also had this Retro Gamer, which is uh, which is Sonic on the front cover because it's Sonic's 30th birthday. Um, I ordered this from a separate website, so I got two. So this one finally from the website came back, and I asked, I was like, hey, can I get a refund on this because I already bought it? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I got this one basically for free. Um, maybe I'll. Maybe I'll give this one away somehow. Um, but I, I got two of them, and one comes with like there's like a multi companion guide in the back or something, and with a bunch of interviews. I previewed this already, and there's a bunch of like interviews with Yuji Naka Naka inside of it, and a bunch of other um, visionaries that created the Sonic the Hedgehog character. So which is really neat. Um, another publication that I have and I subscribe to because I'm part of the GameStop <laughs> rewards program uh, is Game Informer. Game Informer is actually really good, guys. Um, these are, this is Tales of Arise, and this is the new, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, Marvel Midnight Suns, which I, ugh, I don't know, I, I, it's a card-based game, and Ghost Rider looks terrible in it, but Wolverine looks cool, like, that's really neat, so, I hope someone's excited for that, I'm not, but this one I am, Tales of, uh, <laughs> this game already come out, came out, and to rave reviews and, and great stuff, uh, so I got that stuff last month, well, this, this one's this month, and everything else is last month, uh, Game Informer's great, um, their editorial team is really good. Uh, they know what they're talking about. Unfortunately, one uh, their their senior their chief uh, <laughs> the editor in chief left um, because Andy's been there for like a long, long time, guys, and he definitely deserves like a change of pace to do something different. I still love print magazines. I don't know who else does. You guys could comment if you want. <laughs> what else I was gonna say with that? I'm not gonna convince you to buy print magazines. Uh, because they're kind of like a lost art nowadays, but I still enjoy them. Anyway, all right, back to my video game pickups. I have quite a few more than I thought was going to happen. I went to Las Vegas uh, this uh, three weeks ago um, for like a little family emergency as well as a family reunion. Um, so I went out there to uh, We Play East and We Play West, where I picked up some of these guys. Those are my favorite uh, video game stores in that valley. Uh, if you're ever in Las Vegas, please go to see them. Ha! Ha ha, I got it. So this is them. We play East and West. Right there. Goodbye, trade and sell. Really cool guys. They have a really good selection of like retro and new games. Mostly retro stuff is where you'll find uh, what you'll find there or want to look for in there. Um, and that's why I like that place. So half of the store is video games, the other half is D&D. &D and like figures and board games and stuff. So if you're all about that kind of thing, they have like tournaments and everything going on. And it's a, it's, it's nuts, like there's tons of people in there. Um, on the video game side, they have like all like these huge shelves and like, like they have servicing. So if you have like problems with your consoles or like you need something cleaned up, like they'll do that service for you there. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, cool spots. What I got for them, I got five games. Uh, let's start with the Xbox games. Uh, I got I got this back, X-Men <laughs> Origins Wolverine, uh, because Insomniac announced that they're going to be doing a new Wolverine game, which is like a perfect pairing in my opinion. Uh, those guys have done the superhero license very well, and they definitely earned the right to make a Wolverine game. And there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to knock it out of the park with that one. Uh, they should be doing pretty well. But if you didn't know, most of these, like this game is amazing. Most licensed games, like superhero games <laughs> and like Spider-Man's before like Spider-Man 2016 were awful. This, like this is one of the few exceptions to that rule. This one and also like Incredible Hulk, Ultimate Destruction, um, other superhero games. Oh, Batman. Batman one's really good. Uh -oh and the Arkham series, those were, were awesome. But this one's actually like a really, really good one. This is made by uh, High Moon Studios, it was a, a Raven? I'm sorry, Raven Studios of like Call of Duty uh, fame right now. Um, but they know how to do their high powered, like cinematic kind of action game. So they knew what they were doing with this one. Um, really cool. And this one, I think I got this for how much? 20 bucks, man. 20 bucks for this really old game. And it's all marked up and shit, but I still grabbed it because I wanted to play it before the new one comes around. I'll probably get to this in like a year. 
to be completely honest. Um, all right, next one I got, I already have this for the PC, uh, but I wanted to get it for a console. And this is Binary Domain uh, by Sega, and but more importantly by, um, I know it's RGG Studio. That's so freaking, they don't say it on here though. That is weird. Anyway, so with this, I don't know if I'll put it with the rest of my RGG Studio <laughs> games, but it's it's definitely made by them. Um, and uh, I enjoyed playing it on PC for like, I think four hours. I didn't really get through it at all. Uh, but when I saw this guy, I was like, yeah, I'll pick this guy up. It's a Sega title, love it. Um, it's for my 360, which is always hooked up somewhere in the house. So definitely pick that one up. Uh, oh yeah, one of these, oh God, they need to bring the series back. Legacy of Kane, Defiance. This one, Legacy of Kane, first of all, should freaking come back. If anything, um, Crystal Dynamics, I know they had a hard time with the Avengers game. If it would be perfect in my brain, because they worked so closely, closely with Xbox, if Xbox asked them to, to reboot the series, I think that would be an amazing get for an Xbox console. Um, and for the rest of us, because they, they this, this series needs to come back, man. Legacy of Kane is some of the dopest games from the 6th Gen era. Um, I won't, like, this one, this one is, isn't about uh, Raziel, it's about the other guy. And, but, regardless, definitely play this. It's, it's an amazing series. Uh, definitely holds up, actually. I remember playing it, like, a few years ago. And um, it holds up very, very well to today's modern standards of a video game. Um, next one, I got Pikmin 3. So, funny thing is, I say that I've been saying this for like two years now. I say that I've had a 100% Wii U collection, right? North America Wii U collection, which is technically true. But I've been saying it wrong, whereas like I've been wanting to have a 100% Wii U physical North American collection. Um, I had Pikmin 3, but I was only digital on my Wii U. So I, I'm like in my head, I always thought that I had it physically for some crazy reason until I think, I think it was like a couple months ago, I was like doing um, stock inventory of all my stuff. And I, I was like, where the hell is Pikmin 3? I can't find it. And come to find out, I never had it. <laughs> so I've been looking for like a, not a cheap copy of this, but at least like an available copy that's relatively cleaned up. Um, this is $15, can't ask anything more than that for a game that's pretty old. Um, it sucks that it's a Nintendo Selects one, but I don't, I don't really mind about that. So yeah, now I officially have 100% North American physical Wii U collection. That is a lot of words, and I got through that, so I'm proud of myself. Uh, lastly, uh, this is probably the most expensive one out of that lot that I picked up. This is for the PlayStation 4, Ruiner. This is a sci-fi top-down shooter kind of deal, very violent. Uh, I'm sorry, sci-fi is, is the genre, cyberpunk is the sub-genre within sci-fi that this is, uh, this is based in. So um, I got this as a recommendation from Che, uh, Che Chow from uh, old EGM fame. He told me, he's like, man, you got to listen to the soundtrack on this. And I was like, really? Is it that good? And he's like, yeah, check it out. And he said, also, not as not only is the soundtrack really good, but the game is also great too. So I was like, okay, I'll wait to buy a physical copy of this because they didn't make too many. Uh, this is a special reserve only uh, title that was uh, that they published. Uh, so n there aren't a lot of these out there. It's it's uh, it's, it's readily available available digitally, uh, but I, you know me, I like my physical copies of stuff. So uh, this one is a little bit pricier. I think this was like, I don't know, $60. Uh, and I expect this one to go hold its value pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna put this one into a case and hold, and after I play it, I'm gonna put it into a case and then take care of it and, and mess around with it. Um, okay, so that was everything from We Play West and East that I picked up. Things that have been sent to me, mailed to me, I've pre-ordered for like a long time, uh, also arrived. Uh, the first one from Limited Run Games, uh, I got, finally, it's been months, years. This is Pan Panzer Dragoon, uh, the remake, uh, physical copy, and then it also, this is the, the special edition, uh, so it came with the Sega Saturn case. Uh, so this goes into this guy, and they're married together. I also got the, the card somewhere, I don't remember where it was. The second title I got is uh, Panzer Paladin. Uh, I don't know anything about this game. I only got it because DL Slugi, Slugs, DL Slugs on Twitter, who's an amazing artist, uh, he made the cover art for this guy. This is also reversible, and the reversible art is amazing. Um, this came in also a collector's edition, but I didn't want to pay that much 
for like a bunch of stuff that I know I'm not going to use or look at. Uh, so I just got the regular version. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to support him, and I wanted to support limited run games. I also wanted to support tribute games uh, by picking this one up. Uh, this will hang out in my Switch collection, and maybe I'll, I'll probably get around to that one, actually. I really do want to look forward to that one. Um, next one that I got from Best Buy? Best Buy. This is Sonic Colors Ultimate. Um, man, like, <laughs> we've been saying for years, Sonic Colors is one of the best game, Sonic games of the 3 era. And I, Sega finally realized that and told us, like, oh crap, we're gonna re-release this deal. I heard this is awful on the Switch, though. <laughs> I heard there's like a bunch of problems with it on the Switch. So I got the PlayStation 4 version, luckily, ahead of time. Um, and it comes with, like, this little dude. Uh, which is super fun. This is similar to, to the... This is the... This is, if you don't know what this is, this is the bunked movie version. This is the original design of the movie version of Sonic before they redid everything, before they came out with that trailer and we all complained about it. So they made a ton of these with the ugly version and I bought one uh, because I thought that'd be funny. Cause like, like look at him, he's, he's still really cute though. But he, it's, oh, he's not the same as like the baby version of Sonic right here. So yeah, they're gonna hang out together, have a good time. Um, so anyway, back to Sonic Colors. Sonic Colors is amazing. Uh, you should play Sonic Colors. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure they'll patch the, the Switch version sooner or later. Um, they have to. Uh, that would be sucky if, if, if Sega left that alone. Uh, Sonic should not does not deserve that kind of treatment. And we've said that many times to Sega, but I don't know what the hell's the problem. But yeah, uh, pick this guy up. I believe this is also on the Xbox, if you want to pick it up for Xbox. I just liked it on PlayStation just because um, and a blue and blue go together uh, really well. So I got that guy, um, the last pickup that I got. So, okay, here we go. Here's a story for you. Um, I, was, I'm really, I was really excited for this one, Lost Judgment, right? So I wanted to do this one right. I was gonna buy the Ultimate Edition, which is like a $90 version of the game, but it's only digital only, right? So I was like, ah, well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna buy the physical version and then pay for the DLC, which I hate in this freaking gaming uh, climate now that we have. <laughs> I hate doing that. Anyway, so I bought this. I wanted the steelbook, so the only way to get a steelbook is through GameStop, right? Okay, fine. Best Buy does this all the time. Amazon does this all the time. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get the steelbook version of this, and I'm gonna pay for the DLC to get like the ultimate version in my eyes and we should be okay. This arrives on my doorstep last Thursday. And I was like, sweet, I'll install it. Then when I'm installing it, I was like, this is missing the steelbook. Where the hell's the steelbook? <laughs> and so I tweeted out and I was like, this is weird. And I see other people's tweets of like, yeah, theirs is delayed also. And some have been damaged. And when I'm on Twitter, I see like people are like, oh yeah, it's been delayed for me. Um, when I when I do get it, it's like kind of banged up and whatever. I was like, oh crap, like what the hell's gonna happen to my copy? <laughs> and like, I, I don't normally shop with GameStop a lot um, unless they have something really exclusive that I want. Uh, not because I don't like them, their service is actually really good. Their employees are, are actually really good. Um, it's just their top people that I feel like they need work on. Um, so yeah, like when, when I looked up my order, it said that my steelbook will be delivered two days later. And that became three days. And I was like, Shh, well, I'll just install this and play this for now. I'm gonna enjoy it no matter what, right? And then when the day finally came and I got the package, this is what I got. I got the lovely still book, but this is the condition it came in. It is broken off the binding. And I was like, shocked. I was un like, I've never received, um, uh, we call it a video game item this badly damaged before. Like, I, and, and I'm not the only one, like some, some guys have seen like dents inside of the, on top of it and everything and we're like, what the hell happened to this thing? Like this thing, is it scratched? No. So, and, and I, I got pissed. I was so mad. First of all, you're late. Second of all, it's damaged the fuck. I can't use this thing. And so I, I went onto Twitter cause I find like this is the easiest way compared to customer service to get the attention of someone 
that will do something about it. I've done it before because I've lost luggage on an airline and the, literally the fastest way, instead of calling their direct like customer service line or any of their like their airline toll free numbers or whatever that, is to contact someone on their Twitter page. So I went to the GameStop Twitter page, which is the wrong social media page to go to. They actually have a GameStop, at GameStop help page you should go to if you really have really huge issues or you're he you were heated like me at the time and complain there. Um, I'm sure if I called the customer service hotline they would have been fine they would have been able to help me out but I was just so pissed that I'm like come on like I'm not the only one who's suffering from these problems plenty of other people have been doing that too and it's listed on my thread. So uh, yeah I, uh, I luckily they're like we're so sorry, we apologize. No one should ever get a product like this from us in this kind of condition. We're gonna express mail you a replacement. So thank you very much, GameStop. I hate that like that happened. It's, and it's probably not even your fault. Um, well, it kind of is because you put it in like this kind of like, this is literally <laughs> the package it came in and you can't trust that those guys at UPS or FedEx or whatever are gonna like handle everything with care. I've had so many packages that have been completely damaged by their um, by their methods. So um, yeah, I just wish it came in in a better better case. Like Amazon has like these tougher um, that are like almost cardboard, but like rigid style cardboard cases that like everything survives that. I don't know what the hell that is, but it works. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, that was my last pickup was this. So I hopefully I'll be getting a replacement of this guy soon. I am enjoying Lost Judgment and Halo Infinite at the same time, which is amazing to me because those are like my two favorite genres or like video game, um, like modern video games to play nowadays. Halo being like my old school favorite and the RGG games have been like a staple of mine since 2005. So I've been enjoying the heck out of Lost Judgment. It's a huge game. I think I'm eight hours in. I'm only on chapter four right now. But I'm enjoying my time walking around uh, Yokohama and in Jincho with Yagami and friends and we're just like skateboarding everywhere and like taking down the Leomong and doing all this fun stuff. Anyway, those are my pickups for September. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a great time. I hope you like, subscribe and comment on what you saw here today and like just let me know how your day is going on. I don't care. I'll, I'll contact you back. And start a conversation. Um, I hope you keep gaming. Gaming is fast and wide. Keep collecting out there. Have a great time and then peace. Take care.